<sighs> part three, final part. Glad you made it this far. If this is part three and you haven't seen parts one and two, check out the links here, down the doobly-doo. Uh, won't be a link here. Anyways, the links down the doobly-doo, go watch parts one and two first, come back to watch part three. See you in a bit. <laughs> all right, time for the main event. Got all the paint pouring in. Now it was time to get the paint splattering in the actual speaker. So the method I did to this is exactly the same as I did in my previous speaker speaker splash photo speaker splash photography I don't remember what I called it video up here take a look and you can see all the details I go into the details of how I set it up the whole works basically exactly the same thing the one difference I did this time is previous video I stretched the bag over top to be flat so I could get reflections and whatnot this time I laid the garbage bag in so it would actually be in a bit of a bowl before I did the uh, splattering same as the others I did some splattering in three or four different positions. I think in the end, they ended up. I did those, went upstairs, added a bunch, wasn't really happy, came down a second time, did it some more. With the speaker splatter, with the speaker splattering, you're never sure what you're gonna get. It's always, you know, turn on the speaker, take the picture, turn on the speaker, take the picture. Uh, maybe one in five are, are really usable. Um, so I had to take a bunch of them to get all the different positions. <clears throat> the other thing I noted, um, when I did this one, I just grabbed the garbage bags that we had. Didn't realize until later, but the garbage bags had a bit of a texture to them. So that meant they required a lot of uh, Photoshop work in the end to get rid of that texture. Uh, in the end, I'd be very careful to use smooth garbage bags next time. Tip for you. So back up in Photoshop, same as the paint pours, almost. You you'd get the original image, you crop it down, you mask as much as you can. I'd use the color selector and then a bunch of manual masking to get as close as I can. Paste it into your uh, master image, do the color shift. And then in the main image, I did a lot more transforming to get the rough size shape to, to try to match the speaker. And then I used the liquify tool to improve the fit into the speaker, sort of had to um, I had to do a fair bit of trying to get it to a bit more depth in the bowl, if you know what I mean. So I used Liquify to that, and then I also stretched some of the splashes a little bit taller with Liquify as well, just to get a little, a little bit more extension. So, and the, the mixed paint inside there is all done in Photoshop. Basically, I have two copies of the paint, of the exact same paint splatter. The top one is one color, the bottom one is the, the alternate color. Then just use a gradient mask to get the fade. Once you have that, you can't just leave it at that because some of the splashes will overlap. A single splash from the base won't change color as it gets up higher. So I had to do a bunch of manual masking where I pick the gray color in the mask from the base of the splash, fill in to the top of the splash, and then it started looking a lot more realistic. As I mentioned, wasn't totally happy with the initial splashes, so back in the garage, took a bunch more, back up in Photoshop, took a bunch more, or edited a bunch more. Some of these splashes I ended up doing three times before I was really happy with them. Pretty much all of them I did at least twice. Now at this point I keep looking at the image, I just see these cans floating in midair. So I had to work on that. So, I, uh, Wanted, I had this idea of some kind of gears or chain or something like that holding them up to give it more of a bit of a factory feel. So I talked to my buddy, Keith. Hey Steve, glad to help out. Anything to keep you in the garage. And he's real into biking and whatnot. So do you got any old chains and stuff? And in fact, he had some brand new chains still in the box with the gears and the sprocket and the whole works. I created this just out of some old two by six that I had in here. Wrapped the black poster board around there so, for, so cropping was a bit easier. Just a screw up here. Um, I don't have the gears here anymore, but basically hung it from here and the chain hung down. Again, took pictures every 14 inches um, so I can get the perspective right.
was showing this to my buddy Jim at work. Hey Steve, happy to point out the obvious anytime you need. He liked the effect, he, was, he liked the uh, splashes of the speakers, but he made the comment, he looks and says, you know, now that the paint's in there, you can't really even tell that it's a speaker. I'm like, yeah, I kind of thought of that when I was editing. The, the paint fills the whole speaker, so it just looks like a box with a bowl of paint. It's not really clear that it's the sound of the speaker splattering. So he's kind of looking at it. He made the suggestion to add an extra speaker driver on the front. And I thought, you know, the more I thought about it, great idea, Jim. So back in the garage, tilt this this way, took multiple pictures, cut out the driver, and now I have speakers on the front. It's more obvious what's happening along the uh, speaker box. So back in Photoshop, went to my sub file, the Photoshop file that just had the speaker box in it, added the extra drivers. And once you add them in there, go back to the main file, it automatically gets updated. Very handy. Same thing for the gears, uh, a lot of cutting out. Didn't have to do any translation or warping on the gears. Had to do a little bit of scaling to get it just right in the different positions. But both the extra speakers and the gears Took me two tries, took pictures, tried them in Photoshop, got most of them, had to come down, retake a couple, then we got them right in the end. All right, at this point, I'm getting close to the end, so I ha finally had to deal with the, the paint in the trough. As, as I mentioned, I wasn't happy with it. It just, it looked pretty, put that there. It looked pretty fake with the, uh, with the piece of wood in there. So I knew I was gonna to have to put some real paint in the trough. <clears throat> so cut a short section. I didn't want to fill the whole trough with paint. There's not enough paint in the can. So at this point I moved my uh, custom high quality stands closer together put the trough there. At this point, I was just gonna take the paint, where'd my paint go? <clears throat> just pour it in there. So my thought was, as I pour in, if I pour it in quickly, the paint will take some time to smooth out and maybe there'll be a little bit of ripples and whatnot in the paint, it'll look a bit more realistic. So I did that. It turns out this trough holds that whole can of paint, no problem. So it doesn't even really get high enough. So took those pictures, went and looked in Photoshop, wasn't all that happy with it. I knew I needed something else. So, <laughs> so I just had all the paint sitting in there, set up the camera to take pictures every five seconds. And I just started stirring up the paint. So the paint was thick enough that when I ran the, the stick through there, you would see a bit of a V and it would just slowly come back to level. So if I could, jiggle the paint in there enough, take the picture, time it right, then I could get textures in, inside the paint. Turned out this looked a lot better in the final image in Photoshop. In the end, I ended up using three images of the paint trough in different positions to get the full length. And I had to do a fair bit of masking and blending to get it look just right so it didn't look like three different sections and it actually blended together. Then there was the, uh, the color shifting and blending to get the mix where the two colors mix together just right the way I liked it as well. So at this point in Photoshop, I had all the, all the elements uh, in place. And it was just a matter of doing a lot of tweaking and adjusting this, adjusting that. It took several days and each day I would adjust something different and okay, I'm happier with that. And then I'd notice something else the next day, that sort of thing. One thing I noticed is that the down on the floor in the front of the speaker, you'd expect a little bit of splatter there. So I took some paint splatter from my speaker shots when I had the paint jumping up and down, cut and pasted that on the floor, did a little bit of coloring there. And then also there was some pictures that I had paint dripping on the front of the speaker, added that, and it seemed to add a little bit more realism to the picture. I was surprised how much of a difference just adding this little bit of splatter on the front did to the whole image. It seemed to make more sense. I ended up spending a lot of time on the uh, speaker paint as well to get the blending to work just right so it didn't uh, catch my eye. It, it kept, I kept looking at it and going like, oh, I keep looking at that and there's something wrong. I had to get more of a blend in there. In the end, I'm fairly happy with it. 
I kept showing my image to a few people that I trusted as I developed it. People I knew that would actually tell me if they found a problem or something that needed tweaking. It's hard to get honest feedback these days. People just look and say, oh, great image, when I'm actually looking for real feedback. Tell me if something's wrong, right? A couple people who were, were really instrumental, they didn't want to be on this video. They don't want to be attached to me in my videos for some reason. I, I don't understand. Almost every time that these people mentioned something or I showed the image and Sean says, oh, that's great, but you know, what about this part? It was something that was in the back of my mind or I had noticed before. So immediately when they brought it to light, I knew I had to fix it. I think when you're working on an image like this, I'm looking at all the details and sometimes it's hard to see the big picture, pun intended. It was great to get the helpful feedback. In the end, I never really knew when the image was done until it was about three or four days and I hadn't changed anything. I knew at that point, okay, I must be finished. I don't, I'm not seeing anything that bugs me anymore. So here it is, the final image.